How can you improve your English pronunciation? Let's find out. Hello, it's Keith from English Speaking Success and the website, the Keith Speaking Academy. Here to help you develop your speaking skills in a fun and professional way so you can face the IELTS examiner with confidence and ace your test. Now then, today I'm very excited because I've got an interview with the CEO of Elsa Speak. Her name is Wu Van. And if you don't know Elsa Speak, this is a mobile app that uses AI to help you improve your English pronunciation. It's an app that I've been advocating for a couple of years now. Um, I think it's a wonderful app. Um, and so I'm very excited to have this chance uh, today to speak to Vu. And we're going to be discussing everything around pronunciation. We're going to talk about the challenges of learning English, um, of moving to America and how to handle pronunciation issues, talk about confidence, we talk about identity, we talk about the, the really difficult aspects of pronunciation, talk about accent and how that's not really so important. Vu will give you lots of insights as a learner, but also as a creator of this app, um, which I think will help you develop your pronunciation. But I think this interview also will be a source of inspiration for students around the world. Without any further ado, let's jump straight into the interview. Um, so, hello, Vu. It's great to see you. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you, Keith. How are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. I'm great. Um, it's lovely to have this chance to speak to you. Um, and today we're going to, well, we're going to talk about pronunciation and pronunciation in English um, and talk about different aspects of that. Before we begin, it'd be really good to, I think, for viewers to watching to find out or know a bit more about you. Tell us about your background, where you're from and, and what you do. Yeah, no, uh, such a great honor to uh, be uh, sharing my experience with you today, Keith. Uh, my background, so I was born and raised in Vietnam. Uh, growing up, I finished college in Vietnam. I worked for a couple of years in Vietnam and then um, moved to Denmark um, as I worked for a global shipping and logistic company. So I spent a couple of years in Denmark as our headquarter um, there. Um, and one day decided that, hey, it's time for me to continue exploring what next in my life, right? Like, I was actually really happy with my company. It's like home is family. But, you know, sometimes the kids just have to grow up and get out of your comfort home and, and, and go explore the world. And so I actually packed up and moved to the U.S. Uh, I did my MBA here at Stanford. Um, and I also did my master in education at Stanford. I've always been passionate about what education can do for you, not necessarily being an educator myself. I've never taught really. Um, as a teacher, right? But I have seen on my firsthand experience how education really opened up opportunities for me uh, in life and, and privileged to do that. So I also pursue a master in education um, and hopefully one day we can really uh, tackle the uh, all of the challenges around the education world that we live in, uh, in addition to my MBA at Stanford. Um, after uh, two years at Stanford, I went on and worked for a management consulting firm um, and stay there for a few years uh, here in the Bay Area in San Francisco. Actually, that's why you see the background of San Francisco Golden Love Gate. It. Fish. I yes, I in San Francisco. Yeah. Um, and eventually went back to my passion um, and say, hey, I had spent enough time in the corporate world and learned everything that I needed uh, there to learn. Um, but I really, really got an itch about, hey, is there anything that we can do in education? And language learning is a huge part of my personal journey and my personal story. Um, I know that English has opened a lot of doors for me um, as I grew up, but it was also English that also causing me a lot of challenges as I started living and working abroad. I was working in Denmark and later on did my MBA at Stanford. What I then realized is that, hey, I could be very comfortable in writing and reading, um, right? I would be very good at doing everything that uh, required a test, but speaking is a very different challenge. And then that's when English also brought me so much what we call it quote unquote pain is because you started feeling that your confidence got taken away because when you started speaking, people had a very hard time understanding you. And so, yeah, so that was the beginning of the journey of why I then transitioned out of the corporate world, left my consulting job and then started Elsa um, as part of my passion. And it has been eight years in counting and, and here we are. 
Right. Fascinating. That's great. Now, just stepping back a bit, because you talked there about moving to, to California or to the States, you studied a master's in Stanford and you talked about struggles with the, the English language. I mean, as a Vietnamese arriving in America to study in a university, what were the, what were the struggles? Uh, unpack that a little bit. What were the challenges there? You know, there's a lot of challenges, right? First is being a foreigner um, in a new land where you have to learn everything about the cultures, right? Like where um, you have to learn to fit in. So there's a lot of challenges that compounding on each other. Um, and uh, with the privilege of being at Stanford, uh, where you are surrounded by all of the smart students, there's also the challenge and the struggle of like, do I really belong here? Uh, is the school making an admission mistakes that I should not be here because all of your students, your friends around you, were amazingly talented and you looked into yourself and it's like, what do I have, right? So there's also that challenge of knowing whether you fit in or not and fighting your, we call it your your, your tribe, right? Uh, but eventually all of that compound with like having that, or oh, you already sort of lost your confidence that, wow, these people are amazingly talented. And comes the fact that when you started speaking, people always had to struggle to understand you and keep asking you to repeat what you say. And you felt more and more isolated in a group because in the group they they won't stop and wait for you to speak right everybody jump on each other you know americans right we never stop and, and be polite and give turns to each other you speak when you can right and if you are if people struggle to hear you and understand you they of course skip over you um right and so that challenge became more real and real um as you started going through your journey and navigating that right and so i think the biggest moment aha moment for me was that I sort of lost my confidence. And I think confidence right. goes a long way to all of us, right? Like it carries us through every single challenge in life, whether you are good or not, but you're confident that you can do it, I think it's really important. But the yeah. moment you realize that you're sort of slowly losing it, I think that's a wake up call, right? Like what can you do to regain your confidence? And for me, the big part of it was, can I be seeing myself very uh, confident in communicating in this right. country? Right. Um, and I don't have to be an American. I don't have to speak perfectly like an American, uh, but I want to make sure that I can confidently speak that people can easily understand me. And I think that was the, the, the epiphany of the challenge that I realized. And actually I started figuring out what can I do to improve my English communication? Um, right. Like, uh, talking so to what friends. did you do? How did you do that in those days? So, yeah, so actually, so, of course, I went on YouTube and, you know, people said, oh, and I have been learning English for 20 years. So I'm not new to this world, right? But I started looking, what else can I do? Because granted, I was really good at English. I mean, I ace every single test score. So it's not that I don't know English at all. I'm, But I just struggled to speak and people had a hard time understanding me. I still remember a lot of time in the classroom, right? The professor would be like listening to what I say, but then say thank you and acknowledging it, but then moved on to my friends. And my friends were trying to say pretty much the same thing I said, but then they got very different attention. And so I knew that people had a hard time understanding me. So what I did was um, eventually watching YouTube, right? Like uh, trying to mimic what people say. People say, oh, you watch a lot of Netflix and it's going to help improve your English. Everything is true to a certain extent, but what I realized is that nobody ever really tell me what I do right and wrong when I speak English. Like, you can listen mm. to my English, but you're not going to pause and give me feedback, right? Like, you try your best to be very polite and understand it at best, right? But you're not going to say, hey, boo, that's that's wrong and that's wrong, right? Because it, it hurts me and my ego too. Mm. Uh, but then what I realized is that there's a solution in the U.S. called a private speaking coach. And okay. these are offering solution for you one-on-one -on -one. um i tried it out with one of the 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 one of the best uh private speaking coaches that i got introduced through through my friends and uh he was like hey let's go a session and then he would listen to me everything that i say highlighting exactly the mistakes that i made in my pronunciation my choice of vocabularies the phrases that i use my rhythm and int intonation right and he can say at the end given that this is a lesson that i pay for he had no problem telling me what i do right and wrong and i had no problem receiving feedback because i came in with an intention of wanting to get feedback so i don't mm. feel affected right? and was so that then, useful oh well it was transformational because actually for the first time people told me exactly what i did right and wrong it was very hard to hear but it was transformational because knowing 
and being aware of the mistakes that you made is half of the battle. Yep. Now, of course, the other half of the battle is how to improve it. That's not easy because you have done something wrong for 20 years. It's hard. It's a habit that you have done, right? And so you have to keep practicing it. But I thought it was really, really powerful. But then what I then quickly realized, it became so expensive. I cannot afford it because it's private. And it's not like it's not like you take one or two hours and then you become good, right? It's like hours and hours of practice. And so actually I ran back to my one of my friends at Stanford and say, hey, and he's American and all that. I say, hey, will you help giving feedback on my English? And it's right. like, no. You won't like it. I'm like, no, no, no. I actually mm -hmm. want it, right? And so actually he became my private coach as a friend mm -hmm. so that I don't have to pay for a lot of money for it. But yeah. it was it was actually day and night. So my English right now, I still speak like a with a Vietnamese accent and all of that. But now and back then, 12, 13 years ago, was completely different in right. terms of the, the speaking fluency, right? Like the, right. the ability of what people can understand me. And I'm very proud of it because I don't need to get rid of my accent right now. I'm actually proud of my certain Vietnamese accent Good because it's authentic. It, it is who I am. But I don't have the problem of not being confident when people don't understand me anymore. Right. Yeah. That's so interesting. I mean, I, th I think you've hit the nail on the head. I think you talked earlier about it being about confidence um, rather than identity. And, you know, I think it's really important for students to have pride and in their own accent the problem is not really accent, right? The problem is pronunciation, which is a, a different thing. Um, and the confidence is really important to, to build up towards that. Now, it's interesting. I mean, speaking to you, uh, you you're obviously very entrepreneurial. You, you have become, you are the CEO of, of Elsa. You've decided to solve your problem by building a company. <laughs> Most people would go and get a coach. You thought, no, I'll build a company to solve the problem. Um, what what inspired you to, A, to focus on pronunciation and B, to build a company? So, you know, I, I struggled myself and I knew I was not alone, right? Like I knew right. that if I turn around left and right and talking to all my international friends, majority of us have the same challenge, right? That we all say that, hey, in my own language, I feel really smart, um, like a PhD level smart. And then in trying to speak in English and having people understand me, I feel like a kindergarten learning how to speak. And people, a lot of the time, distrust your ideas and your credibility because of the way how you communicate your ideas. And I don't think it's the fair uh, thing, right? Uh, because um, your, 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 your ability and your expertise got clouded by your communication skill. And so I really, really hope that there's a solution like that to help us, not just to teach you everything in English, because there's so many different venues that you can learn English. Um, and people have been doing an amazing job, but as a real, uh, private coach or buddy that can be there and help you practice your English. And it goes beyond pronunciation for me, eventually it's about how you feel confident as you communicate in English, whatever that capacity it is. You can be a junior person, still confident in speaking out loud your ideas and make sure that your voice are being heard. If you're a senior, having that personality carried through so that people can see who you are while you communicate in English. It doesn't have to be, wow, in Vietnamese, you are a very different person in English, you're a different person. We want to make sure that your personality carry through. Right? And so, so that's the motivation uh, of doing that. But instead of relying on human, because it costs a lot of money, I personally couldn't afford it. And I was lucky enough to have a friend, but I also know that not every single one of us sitting out there in the world, in different corners of the world, have access to that friend that willing to help you out. And so that's why we create Elsa very early days as a personal coach, a personal friend that can be there to help you to the journey of you learning to speak English. Now, the coach is um, has evolved quite a lot and the idea has changed a lot as well. We want to help you with whatever you need, right? Whether that's your pronunciation, because that's that's half of the battle at the beginning. We call it intelligibility. It's not about accent. It's about intelligibility, meaning that how much do people understand you? It doesn't really yeah. matter what accents you have. You can speak American English, Eng Singaporean English, Australian English, British English for what matters, right? It doesn't really matter at all. And I have Vietnamese English. But it's about being understood by others, right? Yeah. Um, it's also going beyond pronunciation. We provide feedback on your rhythm and how fast do you speak? Are you pausing? Are you giving it enough of the 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 personality in your speech? But we also provide you guidance on are you using the right vocabularies in that context? Because in your own languages, 
uh, one-on-one translation from Vietnamese to English might not carry the same culture, right? And so we're also teaching you on how to weave in the different vocabularies and phrases uh, in different contexts. And most likely, uh, and most recently with AI, we actually evolved the technology becoming like, hey, you can actually role play with a friend, um, AI yeah. friend, Elsa, yeah. right? Like, so you could be very nervous walking up to order a Starbucks coffees because you don't know how to order it because you know all of these vocabularies, but in that moment, you got so stressed and you don't know how to use your English, which happens a lot to all yeah. of us um, as a foreign uh, language learner. And so we actually built Elsa now as an AI uh, friend that can say, hey, Elsa, I want to prepare for my Starbucks ordering coffee or I'm about to go on a date with uh, a potential first day. What do I do in that conversation? Or more professionally, <laughs> I'm about to have a job interview, right? Like, can you help me mark that job interview? And so so it has evolved a lot, but I think our motivation, our mission stays the same. How do we make sure that we help you communicate better in English and we meet you where you are, right? Whether your struggle mm. is certain skill, we mm. provide that guidance. But we stay focused a lot more on speaking. We don't mm. focus on, um, oh, you want to write a thesis. How do you write the best thesis out there in the world? I think there's right. a lot of tools that can help you with that. But, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, some people watching may not realize, but Elsa is it's an app. It's a mobile app that you can use to practice speaking, recording your voice, and it gives feedback right on your speaking. I mean, I, I've used it. I've, I've even got some study sets up there in Elsa. Um, I think it's a fascinating app. I think it's great. It's it's got to be one of the best, um, the one of the best technology apps from the point of view of the machine learning and the technology yeah. getting it accurate. It's 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 very 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 good. I mean, your background is you did a master's in in, in MBA, right? You did a master's in education. Um, so I understood, I understand that you know you you went to work with speech scientists and you went to work with um, machine learning scientists to try and work out how how to build this app. As as you were going through that journey, um, what what did you learn? What did you discover? Oh my God, uh, I could spend another week talking about what I learned. And in what two I minutes. Uh, in two <laughs> minutes. I think you learn the unknown is actually, everything is possible to crack if you put the right uh, heart and soul into it, right? Like I started out with having absolutely no background in AI um, and technology. Uh, but when I started out, I actually have no co-founder. And I spent six months looking for a co-founder. But even before I met the co-founder, we already get a proof of concept that shows something that worked. Um, and it's just the tenacity that you put in into things that you care enough about carries a long way. Mm-hmm. Um, right. And so for me, I was deeply driven by this ambition that, hey, I want to solve the speaking communication challenge for all, for a billion people out there. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I in my whether that takes me down the path that I had absolutely no clue. But as long as I have the confidence that, hey, it's the right path, I'll go mm-hmm. tackle it, right? And I think that tenacity and just like that determination, but it's driven by the right uh, passion has carried us through for like the last eight years or so, right? We constantly mm-hmm. say, hey, what else can we do to help the students improve their speaking? Because we meet more and more students, right? At the beginning, we meet a smaller group of students and they have a different set of challenges. But then as we meet more people, they say, oh, now I have other challenges, right? And that's why you also see the product is the living version of our passion being carried through because we continuously improve the product. And I think that's what I learned is a lot of us say, oh, if I want to do something, I have to be an expert in it to do it. And it, it's true that's easier for you to do that. But sometimes mm. it's actually a blessing that you're not an expert in something to tackle something. Because when you're an expert, your knowledge is being capped by what it can be done. When you're right. an outsider in, you have absolutely no clue where the cap is because you haven't done it before. You haven't even tried it. So you think that everything is possible, right? When I started out eight years ago, using AI to teach people English was very new. Now, in the last year or so, you heard about GBT and all of a sudden it becomes such a thing, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but eight years ago, people did not even think about it. And for me, having not done anything in AI, I was very naive and say, why can't AI not do it? Like, mm-hmm. what does it take for AI to do it, right? And then my friend said, oh, you need data. I'm like, oh, that's it. You just need data to train the model. I yeah. can get you data. How much data do you need, right? And so you started tackling the issue being with a very naive view. And so I think there's a benefit for you to being an expert because it helps you move things faster. But there's also a benefit of not being an expert in something because it gives you that 
the sky uh, is the limit uh, kind of mentality and you just come right in. And of course, you then have to quickly surround yourself by the experts so that you don't have to figure out everything by yourself because it could right. take you before you figure it out, right? But I think that's what I learned. Um, so for those of you out there who have a deep passion about something, you don't have to be an expert to do it. You, 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 you can learn and become an expert at something eventually if you care enough about it. That's fantastic. That's a great, great insight. And if you don't become the expert, surround yourself with experts yeah. and, and work with those, right? Now, again, as you've come from Vietnam, you, you've um, been, your mother tongue's Vietnamese, learning um, English. What what advice would you give students now, not only from Vietnam, but from around the world who are, who are maybe they've started their English learning journey for a year or two, they're struggling with um, with language and pronunciation, what advice would you give them? I think practice, all right? Like mm -hmm. having, a, um, and, and it's not about promoting the product, but English is a, we call it a living language because the more you use, the better it's going to get and the more natural it's going to come out to you. Mm -hmm. The more you learn through paper and book, the more foreign it becomes because whenever you want to use it, it doesn't come out naturally, right? Mm -hmm. And so as painful as it is at the beginning that you might not sound perfect and it's very hard for every single word to come out of you naturally, just got to speak and practice, right? And get the feedback because there's also the myth that, oh, I would just speak and eventually it's going to get better. Mm -hmm. it, it might not because until you improve what you have been doing wrong, it's just hard for you to get better. And, and and the effort could take longer and then it makes you feel like de deterred because it's like, oh, now it's just, it's, just, it's just a hard challenge, right? So so I think for all of you out there, especially when you're at the beginning of the journey, the best recipe for you is just to practice and get feedback, right? Um, and continuously improve on that feedback. And you will see the progress. It's not going to happen overnight. Mm -hmm. It's going to slowly happen. But what magically about English is that you might not know that you know enough and you are very good at it until you speak it out. And then you say, oh, wow, I can do a sentence. That's easy. Now I can do five. I can do a short one. Now I can do a long one. Now I can hold a conversation about a weather topic, which is very simple. And so eventually it's just magically come naturally to you as soon as you practice speaking, right? So whether you have a friend that just like, hey, can you talk five minutes in English or open an AI tool um, and we, we, we offer that solution so that, hey, today I have five minutes, let's talk about weather, right? And so having a friend to practice role playing that, but then at the end, get the feedback, right? Like, hey, what did I do right? What did I do wrong? How do I improve it? Get the teachers to help you out. Hey, I'm struggling with this. Is there any guidance, right? So that you can learn from that. Go on YouTube and take out all of that video. So I think get that entire learning experience integrated for you. But eventually it comes down to just like, just, just practice. Practice more. Totally agree. Totally. Even if it's five minutes a day, it's better just to do it. Just go in and do five much, minutes. Much, much better than doing one hour a month, right? Yeah. Like yeah. five minutes a day, but consistent because again, it's the habit. We speak so much in our natural language, in our mother tongues, and that's why we're good at it. Mm -hmm. uh, we have to give English the same amount of time for us to be really good at that, right? And unfortunately, mm -hmm. we don't have the same amount of time speaking in English. So you got to make sure that you speak as much as you can. Um, otherwise... There's just no way. It's, 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 so I think one thing I learned is that learning English, to be good at English, is not a talent. It's a skill that everybody can do, whether you want to do it or not, right? Mm -hmm. you, you might have to be a talented artist to really paint a beautiful picture that the world recognizes. Those are talents that you might be born with or something. But English is a thing that I think is so easy for everybody to, um, to, to, to learn. But mm -hmm. it's also one of the most daunting skills because it takes forever to be good at. <laughs> it does a lifetime and for yeah. you personally which which aspect of english pronunciation has been the most difficult the, the big nightmare you know um the rhythm um and the intonation right so pronunciation mm -hmm. is how do you pronounce every sound perfectly and at some point even American don't pronounce every single sound perfectly. And sometimes when you pronounce every single sound perfectly, it sounds very mechanical. It's like robotic. But how you weave it, you know, the intonation, the rhythm, the up and the down, th that's an art. That's actually, there's no science behind it because you and I, 
can have this. I give you the same sentence. Mm -hmm. You can interpret very differently because you want to focus on certain things, and I want to do it differently. And there's no right and wrong. Pronunciation, yeah. I can tell you exactly the right and the wrong. Right, intonation and rhythm are very challenging. And so that again, that one is even harder because that one you cannot learn through a textbook. That's one you just have to speak and listen to people and then observe. Right? Oh, seems like they emphasize in certain areas, or they have a way to move the voice up and down. Vietnamese, actually, uh, surprisingly, I actually did not know until I started working in this. And a lot of the experts told me Vietnamese is one of the most difficult accents in English that people have to uh, understand. And I was like, uh, why? Uh, I got offended, right? I'm like, wait, my English is good, right? Like, But they said, no, it's not about the pronunciation. It's about Vietnamese is a monotone language. It means that we, uh, we, we are like single syllable, right? We don't have a multiple syllable words right yeah. and so for us as we learn english vietnamese people flatten everything and then like idolize air like a single uh out every single syllable right so let's say the word university we don't do university as like have a certain mm -hmm. emphasis we do university as five different words mm -hmm. and so in a sentence like that let's say like i am enrolling in university this is like it become robotic and it's very hard for other people to understand. So I thought that was the hardest challenge um, that you have to eventually get familiar with uh, mm. beyond just the technical pronunciation of the sounds itself. Mm. Fascinating. Yeah, very, very true. I remember when I moved over to, to China and started learning Chinese, I actually found oh. it so difficult um, because the tones were different. Yeah, it's similar to Vietnamese, but yeah. probably less complicated. Um, yeah. And I actually found out I was getting headaches because I had to try and reshape my mouth and I was using different muscles in my mouth and I was yeah. getting headaches for the first few months until yeah. somebody told me it's because Chinese is using different muscles. Yeah, yeah. Crazy. And a final wrap-up question, maybe a personal one, but what's it like for you living in San Francisco? Is it how, What's the big difference from Vietnam and San Francisco? Oh, wow. Can I just say everything? I mean, it's just the people, the road, the food, uh, everything is very different. But I would say like it doesn't have that hustling um, experience as Asia or Vietnam has, right? Like uh, that bustling, hustling uh, mentality. I think here is a lot of calmer, um, right? You can see people out there jogging and yoga and all of that and mm -hmm. back to nature. I think that's actually the one thing that I miss the most whenever I travel back in Asia, even though I love everything about the food and the craziness and all of that, is the nature, right? Like So here in the Bay Area, if you see mountains and hiking trails and all mm -hmm. of that, and so it feels a little bit more back to nature. Uh, but if you like the hustling and all of the the fun atmosphere i think vietnam has a lot to offer and uh and i think i feel lucky to be in between the both worlds because i have a lot of um uh business in vietnam i have a big team in vietnam so i basically split my time yeah. and um so i sort of like go back to the craziness uh, of asia and the fun of it and then when i have enough of it i go back here and i just go hide myself in the forest and hiking trail and just get my calm in my zen back, you know, all of my zen back and, and feel very recharged uh, and energized. Very, very nice. Great. Well, listen, that, it's been very, very interesting talking to you. Thank you for sharing all of your insights and your background. It's absolutely fantastic. Um, if students want to find out more about the ELSA app or about you, um, where can they go? Well, definitely we have a website, uh, www.elsaspeak.com, uh, um, where we have all information about uh, the app. But definitely, if you want to use the product, uh, then you can check it out on the Elsa Speak app on Apple Store and the Google Store. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the, the app will then uh, will walk you through the journey of how to use the product. We'll give you uh, seven first day for free trial so that you can just explore all of the um, the, the, the abilities that the app can help you out. And if you really like it, then you could uh, sign up to be a membership uh, with, with, with us as well. And hopefully we can be part of your journey. Fantastic. Sounds great. Listen, Vu, thank you so much for joining me. Take care and we'll stay in touch. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to share. Thank you. My pleasure. So there we have it. A very big thank you to Vu for joining me today. A big thank you to all of you for watching. I hope you found some interesting insights and information and been inspired by Vu's personal journey as well. Um, if you want to find out more about Elsa Speak, there is a link down in the description and also in the message below. 
Um, if you use that link, you will get a discount, a very nice discount um, off the Elsa app. If you feel it's right for you, go ahead. And if you've enjoyed the video, give me a like. Remember to subscribe, turn on notifications, and I can't wait to see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.